Hi guys, I hope you're doing very well. In this video, we're going to learn two techniques to estimate the test error. Why do we want to estimate the test error? Well, basically because we would like to select the model that makes the best predictions in new situations. And that is the same as, as saying that that we would like the model with the lowest test error. And that's why we want to have a method that allows us to estimate the test error of, of any model. The first thing we should uh, realize is that training error, which is easy to compute, but training error is not a good estimate of the test error. If you remember this graph that we discussed in a previous video, basically by adding flexibility to a model by adding degrees of freedom to a model we can reduce the training error as much as we like but that is not the case with the test error we saw that uh, if we keep on increasing the flexibility of a model if we keep on adding degrees of, of freedom there is a point which is more or less here beyond which the model is too flexible and by that I mean that the model is starting to learn part of the noise in the training set. And because of that, the model uh, will not predict in new situations very well. The test error will, will increase. So basically, training error is, is not a good estimate of, of test error. And we need a, 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 another method to, to estimate test error. We're gonna see two here, and the first one is, is called validation. And, and the idea is pretty, pretty simple. Basically, we've got a data set, and what we're gonna do is to divide this data set into two parts. One of them, we're gonna call it training, and the other one, we're gonna call it validation. And what we're gonna do is to use the training set to train a model, and, and then we're going to make predictions using that model on the observations on the validation set. And we will compute the error that we have on, on, with these predictions. And that will be a good estimate of, of the test error because this model has never seen any of the data in the validation set. That, that's, that's the validation approach. And there are a couple of issues with this validation approach. The first one is that our estimate will be somewhat dependent on how we partition the data set. And that, that means that if, if we partition it in, in another way, and, and this division is, is somewhat arbitrary, we will get a different estimate of the test error. Uh, so we, we should be aware of that. And to understand the second issue that we have with the validation approach, we have to remember a, a key thing in machine learning, which is the more data you use to train a model, the better fit you will get, the better model you will get. And this, the, the intuition, we, we discussed it as well in a previous video, but basically, by using a lot of data, what you're doing is to reduce the impact of, of the noise in the data set because you've got a, a lot of data. So on, on eventually on average, the, the impact of, your, of, your, of, of the random component in, in the training set will, will, be, will be zero in the end. So the more data you use to train a model, the better the model will be, the, the lower the test error it will have. So bearing that in mind, bearing that in mind, when we use the validation approach, it, it seems a little bit wasteful, right? Because we're not using all the data that we have to train the model. We're, we're keeping some of it away. We're holding it apart to, to compute our estimation of the test error. So we may be tempted to to think, okay, so why why don't we use all the data to fit another model? And since we're gonna use all the data, which is more data than this, th the model will be better, will have a lower test error. And, and that is true, and, and it's okay to do that. And the only issue then is that 
and the estimation of the test error we computed is an estimation of of the test error of a model trained with only this data so so if we use that estimate as an estimate of the test error for the model fitted with all the data then we're not doing it very very accurately why because this model the one trained only with this data set will have um, a higher a test error because it has been trained with with fewer data so basically when we use the validation uh, approach we're overestimating the the, the the test error at, at least the test error of a model that has been fitted with all the data that that we have and the second technique we're gonna see is is cross-validation and, and this technique is widely used in in the field of, of machine learning and the idea is pretty simple basically what we're gonna do is to partition our data set into k equal sized parts or, or roughly equal sized in this example I've partitioned it in five blocks okay five blocks of roughly equal size and what we're gonna do is to fit as many models as blocks we have now in the data set. So in this case, five. And the first model we're gonna fit, we're gonna use four of these blocks as training set to train the model. And then we're gonna use the fifth block to compute the, 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 the test error, right? And that's okay because the model fitted with these four blocks have, has never seen the fifth block. And we're gonna repeat that uh, selecting each block as the validation block in, in, in each iteration. And when we finish that, we will have five, five uh, estimates of the errors. And what we're going to do is to, to compute the, the weighted average of, of those errors, which basically is just um, adding the errors that we have um, that we have for each data point in, in the data set. And this, the, the way I've presented it here with the mean squared error is basically for regression problems, but for classification problems, the approach is exactly the same. <coughs> Excuse me. We divide the data set in, into four blocks in this case, and we fit four different uh, models. Each time three of the blocks will be the training set and the fourth block we will use it to <coughs> to compute the, the test error. We're going to discuss very briefly a particular case of cross-validation and that is called leave one out cross-validation. In, in this particular case what we do is to partition the data set in as many blocks as points we have. So basically each block is composed of just one single data point, one observation. Um, and, and therefore in leave one out cross validation, we're fitting as many models as data points we have in the data set. And there's one particular case that it's, it's, it's useful to keep in mind uh, for the discussion that we're going to have now, which is some issues that cross-validation has and, and we have to keep in mind. Well, the first one is that when we train the different models, each of these different models that we've trained has been fitted with only part of the data, right? With, we've, we've left one of the blocks out. And because of that, the test error that these uh, different models will have will be higher than the test error that the model fitted with all the data would have because of the issue we, we discussed before, right? The more data you use to fit the model, the lower the test error uh, the model will have. And because of that, then the estimation of the test error that we compute with cross-validation will have a certain bias. We'll, we will tend to overestimate the test error of the model fitted with all the data. This bias is minimized precisely with leave one out cross validation. Why? 
because in leave one out cross validation, each of the each of the models uh, that we're fitting is fitted with pretty much all the data. It's fitted with all the data except for one observation. So then the, the test error in principle that each of these models will will have will be very similar to the test error of the model trained with all the data. What is the problem with that? Well, the problem is that these n different models that we're fitting with leave one out cross validation are, are really similar. They're fitted with pretty much the same data. The, the, the data that we use to train each of these models differs only in one observation. So all these models are highly correlated. That their estimates will be highly correlated. And as, as a method, the, the method of leave one out cross validation is therefore very dependent on the training set we're, we're using for this whole exercise. And this high dependency on the training set is, is, is basically what we're saying is that this method of providing an estimate of the test error has high variance. So here there's also a trade-off between bias and variance at the time of estimating the test error. When you use leave one out cross validation, uh, the bias is minimized because each of these models you fit is fitted pretty much with with the whole training set with the whole training set except for one point so the bias is is minimized but on the other hand the whole method is very dependent on the particular training set that that we're using so it has a lot of variance the other extreme is when you do two-fold cross validation when you just use two blocks in that case uh, the bias is pretty high because each model has been fitted with with just half the data set that that we had but the good news is that the variance will not be uh, so high because because those two estimates are not very correlated the whole method the two-fold cross cross validation is not so dependent on the particular training set that we're using and as usual the the sweet spot is somewhere in between it's probably not leave one out cross validation and it's not just two fold cross validation and in the literature usually people recommend using a five fold cross validation or ten fold cross validation basically dividing our data set into five or ten different blocks so with this, we finish um, validation and cross-validation, which remember, these are two techniques to estimate the test error. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon on, on the next video. Thanks a lot. See you later, guys.